Today's video, Martini Henry Bandolier will serve double duty as Jawa and Tuscan Raider. Uh, nice thing about working with these two things is, is that you can use leather that's dyed, scarred, marked, beat up, because in the end you're just going to beat it up. Uh, loops are held together with Chicago screws. I need to weather those still. I haven't taken care of that. Uh, I'm going to scuff them up and then I'm going to paint them a little darker color. Um, homemade belt buckles, so save me the trouble on the buckle. Uh, Fairly easy to put together, a lot of hand sewing. Uh, used a half inch bolt to get the measurement for the loops. And marked, the, ran the first stitch, then put the bolt in there, marked the second ones, and then measured from there and just went all the way around the bandolier. So anyways, if you're looking to build one of your own, have fun. I thought it was great, and it's a really classy bandolier with lots of personality. Have a great day. So unlike the British 1903 pattern bandolier that I made last week, this bandolier I wasn't able to find a pattern online for, so no cheating. This bandolier consists of four large pouches of ten bullet loops and two small pouches of five each bullet loops. I spent a little bit of time playing around with the pattern to get the appropriate half-inch sized loop, uh, and once I had that, I cut the primary strap for the bandolier out of a 7-8 ounce leather and then I used a 4 or 5 ounce leather for the bullet loops uh, and just basically cut the bullet loops into a series of shorter straps to make them a little easier to work with. Uh, I guess it's possible I could have used a single strap but it was just a little easier to work with smaller straps. After a little bit of trial and error on getting the sizes I punched holes in the straps for the bullet loops at an inch and a quarter at regular intervals from there and a series of holes in the main body of the bandolier at three quarters of an inch. Uh, that gave me enough excess material to basically create each one of the little loops. I did all of the bullet loops in three straps. I used two long ones that each strap did one full one set of pouches and then I used one shorter one that did the two middle pouches which are the five round pouches. And once I had the first strap done and knew what dimensions I needed, I just transferred those markings to the other straps and punched a whole bunch of holes. Then went through and measured out the markings in the, the main, band, main body of the bandolier. Uh, there are spacers between each one of the pouches to give room for the covers. Uh, and I had to leave a little bit of space in between each one of those. But once I had those dimensions, it was very easy to do. Just... Go through and mark off in three-quarter inch intervals and draw out the shape of the bandolier. Once I had everything marked out, punched a whole bunch of holes and took it out into the garage to airbrush the dye. Uh, again, Jawa stuff, going to get weathered, going to get beaten up. Wasn't particularly concerned about making sure that the dye was particularly uniform. And while you're staring at this as I'm dyeing it, keep in mind that every one of those little lines represents holes that I have to sew. Man, hand sewing these things is a pain. That's a lot of stitching. And once I had all the loops sewn, I took a random round object and used it to make the round edges on what will become the covers for each one of the different pouches. Then I cut the corners off and put a stitching channel in the pieces so that when they're rubbing up against the body, the stitches are inset in the leather and they don't wear through. Uh, I don't expect that these are going to see so much wear that that'll ever be a problem, but yeah, just to be on the safe side, it's good practice. Um, marked them off, cut a line, and then skived the leather down just to make them a little easier to fold over. Uh, took them out in the garage and sanded the entire you know, front edges of each one of the covers down. Then I beveled the edges, and here's where you can see me actually uh, scoring the back to make them easier to bend. But once I had the edges beveled and the back scored, I went through and punched all of the holes. Once I hold, had each one of the pouches punched, I transferred that to the main bandolier and punched the first and last hole so that I had an alignment idea of where they were going to be and how they were going to line up. And then I went through and punched all of the holes in the middle. Again, being careful to keep count 
um, make sure that I had the, the equal number of holes in each one of the, the covers. Uh, and then just hand sewed the covers on, much like I did the bullet loops. So each one of the long pieces, pouches has two closing straps, and each one of the short ones has one. Uh, I cut them out of a piece of four inch, four or five ounce leather, and transferred it to where they needed to be. And I had to do these individually because they actually close between the bullet loops. Uh, so just kind of lined each one of them up, transferred the holes, punched through so that I knew where they were going to be, and then sewed each individual strap on. Uh, and just started at one end of the bandolier and worked my way to the end. Once I had them sewn on, I laid it back over where it was going to close, punched a hole for the Chicago screw, and took a really long Chicago screw, uh, threaded it on from the front, and that lets me basically close the loop over, and there's, in addition to a hole, there's a little slit in each one of the, the closure loops, and it closes over. And I'm not planning on having to open and close these a whole bunch of times, so I wasn't really worried about, you know, functionality. Uh, then re-dyed all of the edges from where I beveled them, uh, touched up anything that I had missed or scuffed up while I was working on it. And then it was back out into the garage to make another buckle. Uh, this buckle is a two inch buckle. Uh, I considered just going to Walmart or someplace like that and finding a belt that had a two inch buckle on it and then pillaging that, but alas, nobody wears belts that big, so here we go. It's just basically a center buckle design. Uh, the little keeper loop that was on there originally tried to do a standard buckle. Uh, didn't work out, so I had to go to a center bar design with the, the bar in the middle and the little belt loop keeper uh, thing. Welded everything together. Uh, used Chicago screws so that I can take the buckle off if I need to or change it or add it or do whatever I wanted to do. Uh, but that pretty much wrapped this up. Uh, it wasn't a hard build except for the hand sewing, so if you tackle one of these, Either have a sewing machine or be ready to do a lot of sewing. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a great day.